So, begin with music. Uh, in honor of the president. <laughs> and the great phony war on dope. This is a Calypso song which gives you, from before you were born, some of you, a history of American government involvement with the um, uh, transport and spread of uh, opium and then continues during the Reagan Bush years with the American government involvement with cocaine. CIA Dope Calypso. <clears throat> It's a little long because the history is pretty long. In 1949, China was won by Mao Zedong. Chiang Kai-shek's army ran away. They were waiting there in Thailand yesterday, supported by the CIA, pushing junk down Thailand way. First they stole from the Mio tribes. Up in the hills they started taking bribes. Then they sent their soldiers up to Shan, collecting opium to sell to the man. Pushing junk in Bangkok yesterday, supported by the CIA, brought their gem on mule trains down to Chiang Rai. That's a railroad town. Sold it next to police chief Brain. He took it to town on the choo-choo train. Trafficking dope to Bangkok all day, supported by the CIA. The policeman's name was Mr. Fowl. He peddled dope grand scale and how. Chief of the border, customs paid by Central Intelligence's U.S. aid. The whole operation, newspapers say, supported by the CIA. He got so sloppy and he peddled so loose. He busted himself and he cooked his own goose. Took the reward for an opium load, seizing his own hole, which same he resold. Big time pusher, a decade turned gray, a working for the CIA. Now, Tuvi Le Fong, he worked for the French. A big fat man liked to dine and to wench. Prince of the Mios, he grew black mud till opium flowed through the land like a flood. Communists came and chased the French away, so Tuvi took a job with the CIA. The whole operation fell into chaos Till U.S. intelligence came into Laos I tell you no lie, I'm a true American Our big pusher there was Fumi no Savan All them princes in a power play But Fumi was the man for the CIA And his best friend, General Vang Pao Ran our Mio army like a sacred cow Helicopter smugglers filled Long Cheng's bars In Zhang Quang province on the plain of jars started in secret they were fighting yesterday clandestine secret army of the CIA all through the 60s the dope flew three to Tenson Hood I got the Marshall key Air America followed through transporting confiture for President Hu all these dealers were decades yesterday the Indo-Chinese mob of the CIA Operation Haylift Officer William Colby saw Marshal Key fly opium. Mr. Mustard told me in the China desk he was chief of dirty tricks. Hitchhiking with dope pushers was how he got his fix. Subsidizing traffickers to drive the Reds away till Colby was the head of the CIA. Now Richard Secord and Oliver North hated Sandinistas, whatever they were worth. They peddled for the Contras to ease their pain. They couldn't sell Congress, so Contras sold cocaine. They discovered Noriega only yesterday. Nancy Reagan and the CIA. They discovered Noriega only yesterday. Nancy Reagan and the CIA. One Milan Rodriguez of the Medellin cartel laundered their dollars and he did it very well. Hundreds of billions through U.S. banks till he got busted and he sang in the tank. Buried in the paper only yesterday when Bush was drugs are USA. Milan told Congress three million coke bucks went to Felix Rodriguez CIA muckamuck to give to the Contras only hush, hush, hush except for Donald Gregg and his boss, George Book. 
Bush buried in the papers only yesterday when Bush was drugs are USA. Rodriguez met Bush in his office many times. They didn't talk business, they drank lemon and limes, or maybe they drank coffee or they smoked a cigarette. But cocaine traffic, they remember to forget. Buried in the papers only yesterday with Bush, vice president of the USA. Now coke and grass were exchanged for guns on a border airfield that John Hull runs, or he used to run, till his Costa Rican bust as a CIA spy trading Contra Coke dust. Buried in the papers only yesterday, and Bush is in the White House of the USA, when Bush was director of the CIA. Panama traffic in Coke was gay. You never used to hear George Bush holler when Noriega laundered lots of cocaine dollar. Bush paid Noriega, used to work together. They sat on a couch and they talked about the weather. The Noriega double-crossed the company like a crackhead burn in New York on Avenue D. So when he got in the big White House, Bush said Noriega was a cocaine louse. The Cold War ended East Europe, found hope. The U.S. got hooked on a war on dope. Glasnost came East Europe, got free. So Bush sent his army to Panama City. Bush's guns in Panama did their worst, like coke fiends fighting on St. Mark's Place and first does Noriega know Bush's company crimes? In 2000 AD, read the Picayune or the New York Times. Does Noriega know Bush's company crimes? In 2000 AD, read the Times, Picayune or the New York Times. Lower East Side, New York, that's where I live. A little short poem. That round-faced woman, she owns the street where the three big dogs screeches at me, waddling with her shopping bag across Avenue B, grabbing my crotch. Why don't you talk to me? Burying her teeth in a smile, voice loud like a taxi horn. You big jerk, you think you're famous? Reminds me of my mother. This is a little poem, a nice poem, which I put in a rock and roll form, but was now banned on the radio. As you may know, the uh, uh, Senator Jesse Helms, who was preoccupied with homosexuality due to some flaw of character of his own, <laughs> also also preoccupied with miscegenation or homosexual miscegenation, apparently, his objection to the Mapplethorpe show, according to the New York Times was, as they quoted him, that it showed men of mixed race making love on a marble tabletop. <laughs> it was a mixed race he objected to, I think. <laughs> anyway, as you know, he's the, um, the um, tobacco cult senator. <laughs> Legal narcotics. I, I, th I think the, the reason he is making so much noise, and Joe Coors, who produces lots of alcohol and funds uh, funds uh, Jesse Helms's research. So between the alcohol lobby or the alcohol pushers and the tobacco pushers, we have a lot of loud mouths trying to cover their own uh, sins, as you might call it at Loyola. <laughs> so that's the reason for all their vehemence. Anyway, this is a poem which I put in rock and roll form, which is a pretty good 45 record. But uh, Jesse Helms introduced a law in 1988 banning 24 hours a day all so-called, quote, mystific, quote, indecent language, unquote, from the airwaves. So now all of my poetry, which is now being broadcast for the first time behind the Iron Curtain, is for forbidden and banned here in America. <laughs> there'll be a hearing before the FCC on um, 20th of this month, followed by a court case. We already won one court case on the subject when the FCC banned indecency between 6 a.m. and midnight. Uh, so we won that, so Helms introduced a law to covering that, saying ban it 24 hours a day, directing the FCC to do that. So it's now being challenged. It means Henry Miller, Burroughs, myself, lots of stuff can't get on the air. So, so uh, this can't get on the air. 
Though it played for quite a while as a 45. Bird Brain. Bird Brain. Bird Brain runs the world. Bird Brain is the ultimate product of capitalism. Bird Brain, chief bureaucrat of Russia, yawning. Bird Brain ran the FBI for 30 years, appointed by Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and never chased Cosa Nostra. Bird Brain apportions wheat to be burned, keep prices up in the world market. Bird Brain lends money to developing nation police states through the International Monetary Fund. Bird Brain never gets laid on his own. He depends on his office to pimp for him. Bird Brain offers brain transplants in Switzerland. Bird Brain wakes up in the middle of the night and arranges his sheets. I am Bird Brain. I rule Russia, Yugoslavia, England, Poland, Argentina, United States, El Salvador. Bird Brain multiplies in China. Bird Brain inhabits Stalin's corpse inside the Kremlin wall. Bird Brain dictates petrochemical agriculture in Africa desert regions. Bird Brain lowers North California's water table, sucking it up for Orange County agribusiness banks. Bird Brain clubs baby harp seals and wears their coats to Paris. Bird Brain runs the Pentagon, his brother runs the CIA, fat ass bucks. Bird Brain writes and edits Time, Newsweek, Wall Street Journal, Pravda, Izvestia. Bird Brain is Pope, Premier, President, Commissar, Bishop, Archbishop, Chairman, Senator. Bird Brain voted Regan President of the United States. Bird Brain prepares Wonder Bread with refined white flour. <laughs> Bird Brain sold slaves, sugar, tobacco, alcohol. Bird Brain conquered the New World and murdered the mushroom god Zochopili on Popocatepetl. Bird Brain was president 1948, 1968 when a thousand mysterious students were machine gunned in Mexico City, Tlatelolco Square. Bird Brain sent 20 million intellectuals and Jews to Siberia. 15 million never got back to the old bohemian pre-war stray dog cafe, St. Petersburg. Bird Brain wore a mustache and ran Germany on amphetamines the last year of World War II. Bird Brain conceived the final solution to the Jewish problem of Europe. Bird Brain carried it out in gas chambers. Bird Brain borrowed Lucky Luciano, the mafia, from jail to secure Sicily for U.S. Bird Brain against the Red Bird Brains. Bird Brain manufactured guns in the Holy Land and sold them to White Goyim in South Africa. Bird Brain supplied helicopters to Central American generals in Salvador, kill a lot of restless Indians in Guatemala, encourage a favorable business climate. Bird Brain began a war of terror against Israeli Jews. Bird Brain sent out Zionist planes to shoot Palestinian huts outside Beirut. Bird Brain outlawed opiates in the world market. Bird Brain formed the black market in opium. Bird Brain's father shot skag in the hallways of the Lower East Side. Bird Brain organized Operation Condor to spray poison fumes on the marijuana fields of Sonora. Bird Brain got sick in Harvard Square from smoking Mexican grass. <laughs> Bird Brain arrived in Europe to conquer cockroaches with propaganda. Bird Brain became a great international poet and went around the world praising the glories of Bird Brain. I declare Bird Brain to be victor in the poetry contest. He built the World Trade Center on New York Harbor waters without regard where the toilets emptied. Bird Brain began chopping down the Amazon rainforest to build a wood pulp factory on the riverbank. Bird Brain in Iraq attacked Bird Brain in Iran. Bird Brain in Belfast throws bombs at his mother's ass. Bird Brain wrote Das Kapital, authored the Bible, penned Wealth of Nations. Bird Brain's humanity. He built the rainbow room on top of Rockefeller Center so we could dance. He invented the theory of relativity so that Rockwell Corporation could make neutron bombs at Rocky Flats in Colorado. Bird Brain's going to see how long he can go without coming. Bird Brain thinks his dong will go big that way. Bird Brain sees a new spy in the market plot to Dubrovnik outside the Eyeglass Hotel. Bird Brain wants to suck your cock in Europe. He takes life very seriously. Brokenhearted, he won't cooperate. Bird Brain goes to heavy duty communist countries so he can get Kagebe girlfriends while the sky thunders. Bird Brain realized he was a Buddha by meditating. Bird Brain's afraid he's going to blow up the planet, so he wrote this poem to be immortal.
Kiss Ass. <laughs> kiss Ass is the part of peace. America will have to kiss ass Mother Earth. Whites will have to kiss ass blacks for peace and pleasure. Only pathway to peace, kiss ass. Uh, let me say, this is, this is a religious college. I also teach in a religious college, the Naropa Institute in Boulder, Colorado, where I've taught for 15 years, which is the first uh, uh, contemplative Buddhist uh, college in the Western world that's been accredited. So the first Buddhist college in the West, and since 86, accredited for interchange of credits. So this is like a little manifesto, 1974. Let me say, beginning, I don't believe in soul. The heart, the famous heart's a bag of shit. I wrote 25 years ago. Oh, my immortal soul, youthful poet Shelley cried. Oh, my immortal ego, little knowing he didn't believe in God, neither do I. Nor all science, reason, reality, and good moral will, collections of empty atoms, as Kerouac, Buddha, scribed. Neither does great love, immortal love, defy pain, nightmare, death, torture, Saigon, police, underground press, Pravda, Bill of Rights. And while we're at it, let's denounce democracy, fascism, communism, capitalism, and heroes. Art's not empty if it shows its own emptiness. Poetry useful if it leaves its own skeleton hanging in the air like Buddha, Shakespeare, and Rambeau. Serious. Dispense with law except for cause and effect, and even the latter has exceptions. No, cause and effect is not foolproof. There is awareness which confounds soul, heart, God, science, love, governments, and cause and effect's nightmare. Figure that out. My father was a poet, Lewis Ginsberg, who was quite a good poet, and is in the old anthologies that I used to study in high school, the Lewis Untermeyer's Modern American and British Poetry. Uh, he died in 1976, uh, philosophic-minded, uh, not in great pain, though he had cancer. He was quite old, he was 80. So there were a few poems I wrote on uh, taking care of him toward the end of his life. Uh, in um, dealing with, uh, you know, helping him bathe or helping him get around the house and uh, working with the problem of somebody very old bidding farewell to life. So I'll read a few of those in a song written on his death called Father Death Blues. And the general title is Don't Grow Old. Wasted arms, feeble knees, 80 years old, Hair thin and white, cheek bonier than I'd remembered, head bowed on his neck, eyes opened now and then, he listened. I read my father Wordsworth's Intimations of Immortality Ode. Trailing clouds of glory do we come from God, who is our home. That's beautiful, he said, but it's not true. When I was a boy, he continued, we had a house on Boyd Street, Newark. The backyard was a big, empty lot full of bushes and tall grass. I always wondered what was behind those trees. When I grew older, I walked around the block and found out what was back there. It was a glue factory. Will that happen to me? Of course, it'll happen to thee. Will my knees grow weak and collapse? Your knees will need crutches, perhaps. Will my chest get thin? Your breasts will be hanging skin. Where will go my teeth? You keep the ones beneath. What will happen to my bones? They'll get mixed up with stones. And my father died. And uh, flying back from Boulder, Naropa, to New York, I wrote a threnody, a death lament. Father Death Blues. <clears throat> hey. Father Death, I'm flying home. Hey, poor man, you're all alone. 
Hey, old daddy, I know where I'm going. Father death, don't cry anymore. Mama there underneath the floor. Brother death, please mind the store. Old auntie death, don't hide your bones. Old uncle death, I hear your groans. Oh, sister death, how sweet your moans. Oh, children death, go breathe your breaths. Sobbing breasts will ease your deaths. Pain is gone. Take the rest Genius death Your art is done Lover death Your body's gone Father death I'm coming home Guru death Your words are true Teacher death I do thank you for inspiring me to sing this blues. Buddha death, I wake with you. Dharma death, your mind is new. Sangha death, we'll work it through. Suffering is what was born. Ignorance made me forlorn. Tearful truths I cannot scorn. Father breath, once more farewell. Birth you gave was no thing ill. My heart is still as time. Near the scrapyard, my father will be buried. Near Newark Airport, my father will be under a Winston cigarette sign buried on exit 14 Turnpike, New Jersey South. Through the toll gate service road one, my father buried, past merchants refrigerating concrete on the cat-tailed Jersey marshes, past the Bud Budweiser Anheuser Busch brick brewery, in Benai Israel Cemetery behind a green painted iron fence where there used to be a paint factory and farms, where Pennick makes chemicals now, under the Penn Central Power Station transformers and wires, at the borderline between the town of Elizabeth and Newark, next to Aunt Rose Gatemack, near Uncle Harry Meltzer, one grave over from Abe's wife Anna, my father will be buried. What's to be done about death? Nothing. Nothing. Stop going to school number six, Patterson, New Jersey, in 1937. Freeze time tonight with a headache at a quarter to 2 a.m. Not go to father's funeral tomorrow morn. Not go back to Naropa, teach Buddhist poetics all summer. Not be buried in the cemetery near Newark Airport someday. The 
next to introduce a classical note, although Calypso is also a classical way of uh, uh, spreading the news in uh, village or oral cultures uh, where the, where the uh, network is not uh, so closely associated with the powers that be in the government or General Electric or whoever owns the networks. Um, there's also the tiger of revolution and of mental effort and wrath, which we've seen in Romania recently, but we haven't seen, and we saw yesterday in Russia, they overthrew the old government. We still haven't had Glasnost in America to make some change here, but I hope that happens pretty soon. It should spread. So in honor of that, by William Blake, who used to sing his songs, <coughs> The Tiger. You all know the tiger? Blake the tiger? How many here? How many heard of that? Yeah. Okay. It's heartbeat. Boom, 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 boom. Tiger, tiger. Trochee. Trochaic meter. Boom, 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 boom. three quarters of an hour from when we began, uh, beginning with earlier work, and then move forward chronologically and read to the extent that we have time, and read poems from the mid-50s, mid-60s, mid-70s, mid-80s, up to this last year. I'll take a break about uh, 9.15 or so. Ten minutes, those of you who are had enough can go out and get high or go home. <laughs> and then I'll continue for another half hour or so. So we'll have a break in the middle, we'll relax. <clears throat> Beginning with Sunflower Sutra. The other thing is, for those of you who are right on the side, could you look through the back of your head and see if you're blocking the view of anybody? So just be aware of the space behind you. Now I think you are. So it might be possible for everybody to move up a little, make a little room so that those who are on the edge over there and over there are, n are not discommoded by your presence. Yeah. Just, just be aware of the space around you. It's uh, like a space awareness exercise, so to speak. <laughs> just panoramic awareness, you know, what is going on around you. An old Buddhist trick. 
So beginning 1955, Sunflower Sutra. <clears throat> I walked on the banks of the tin can banana dock and sat down under the huge shade of the Southern Pacific locomotive to look at the sunset over the box house hills and cry. Jack Kerouac sat beside me on a busted, rusty, iron pole companion. We thought the same thoughts of the soul, bleak and blue and sad-eyed, surrounded by gnarled steel roots of trees of machinery. The oily water on the river mirrored the red sky. Sun sank on top of final Frisco peaks. No fish in that stream, no hermit in those mounts, just ourselves roomy-eyed and hung over like old bums on the riverbank, tired and wily. Look at the sunflower, he said. There was a dead gray shadow against the sky, big as a man, sitting dry on top of a pile of ancient sawdust. I rushed up and chanted. It was my first sunflower. Memories of William Blake, my visions, Harlem and hells of the eastern rivers, bridges clanking Joe's greasy sandwiches, dead baby carriages, black treadless tires forgotten and unretreaded, the poem of the riverbank, condoms and pots, steel knives, nothing stainless, only the dank muck and the razor sharp artifacts passing into the past, and the gray sunflower poised against the sunset, crackly, bleak, and dusty with the smut and smog and smoke of olden locomotives in its eye, coral of bleary spikes pushed down and battered like a broken crown, soon to be toothless mouth of sunny air, sun rays obliterated on its hairy head like a dried wire spider web, leaves stuck out like arms out of the stem, gestures from the sawdust root, broke pieces of plaster fallen out of the black twigs, a dead fly in its ear, unholy battered old thing you were, my sunflower, oh my soul, I loved you then. The grime was no man's grime but death and human locomotives, all that dress of dust, that veil of darkened railroad skin, that smog of cheek, that eyelid of black misery, that sooty hand or phallus or protuberance of artificial worse than dirt, industrial, modern, all that civilization spotting your crazy golden crown, and those blear thoughts of death and dusty loveless eyes and ends and withered roots below, in the home pile of sand and sawdust, rubber dollar bills, skin of machinery, the guts and the innards of the weeping, coughing car, the empty, lonely tin cans with their rusty tongues alack, what more could I name? The smoked ashes of some cock cigar, the cunts of wheelbarrows and the milky breasts of cars, worn out asses out of chairs and sphincters of dynamos, all these entangled in your mummied roots and you there standing before me in the sunset all your glory in your form, a perfect beauty of a sunflower, a perfect, excellent, lovely sunflower existence, a sweet, natural eye to the new hip moon, woke up alive and excited, grasping in the sunset shadow, sunrise, golden monthly breeze. How many flies buzzed round you, innocent of your grime, while you cursed the heavens of the railroad in your flower soul. Poor dead flower, when did you forget you were a flower? When did you look at your skin and decide you're an impotent, dirty old locomotive? The ghost of a locomotive, the specter and shade of a once powerful, mad American locomotive. You were never no locomotive, sunflower, you were a sunflower. And you, locomotive, you are a locomotive, forget me not. So I grabbed up the skeleton thick sunflower and struck it at my side like a scepter and deliver my sermon to my soul, a jack soul too, and anyone who'll listen. We're not skin of grime, not dread, bleak, dusty, imageless locomotive. We're golden sunflowers inside, blessed our, by our own democratic seed and hairy, naked accomplishment bodies, growing into mad, black, formal sunflowers in the sunset, spied on by our own eyes under the shadow of the mad locomotive river Riverbank, sunset, Frisco, hilly, tin can, evening, sit down, vision.
To start again with music, as before, uh, I've talked about meditation, so I'd like to sing a song which